Hi, my name is Doug Windteiger, QA Product Specialist with Atlas Copco, and uh, today we're going to cover QA Supervisor, the routes within the QA Supervisor, and these routes that we develop are going to be pushed down to our measuring devices as the palm and the pad here. So let's take a look. Okay, so if I open up my software here, uh, I'm on the home screen, and over on the left side is routes. So if I click on routes, we see what I have available um, in, in my database of routes. So my database and my routes are set up a little bit different than maybe a typical end user would be, but my routes are set up by joint type or in inspection type, I should say. So I have residual joint checks, I have a tool validation checks, I have a visual and dimensional part inspections. These are all routes I have basically defining what's inside them. That's for my demo purposes. A lot of times routes are defined by what is being done or what needs to be done. It could be a product that's being built. It could be a model of a product. Uh, there could be different routes for different models. I've seen routes that have people's names in them. Uh, again, routes can be at different locations and for different reasons. So keep that in mind. Mine are set up maybe a little bit different than typical. But uh, if I click on residual joint check route, um, you see my route details here. So a couple of things I want you to note at the top is that we have an edit button, a clone button, which is important because we can easily duplicate routes if we need to. And then we have a send routes. That's where we actually send it down to the measuring devices. And then we have sent. So past tense, we can see what we've done. There's basically a history of what's been and sent to what measuring devices. So if you hit send right now, I have this uh, residual check is gonna go to my ST pad. And if I hit send, you'll see that it says sending route, then I should get a response back, a green box saying that it's been done, and then this is gonna disappear successfully sent. And there you go. So that was sending a route, pretty straightforward and pretty easy. If I open back up that route details, um, what I want you to look at here is um, this is what we're going to set up. We're going to set up a new route, but this is information that we need to put in here. And you can see that a route typically has a lot of in inspections in them. Mine only has three. Again, this is a, a demo database that I have, but there could be up to two or 300 inspections potentially inside of a route in there. It can get really large really quick if depending on how it's set up. So, okay. With that said, let me close out of here and let's start a new route. Okay, so to add a new route, I'm going to hit the add button and uh, the route I'm going to make in here is going to be maybe more specific, more real world. I'm going to call it door line quality check. So let's do that by start by putting the name in there. I'm going to say QHX. So door line QHX. So the first thing we need to do is define or uh, come up with a name, what we want to call it. I'm going to leave the description blank. I think the name itself is pretty self-explanatory, but we have the option to put a description in there. So, and the next thing below that is measuring devices. So measuring devices would be our SDA 6000, SD Palm, SD Pad. So I can go up here and search what measuring devices I have available. And as you can see, I have two that are actually online currently. I have my SD Pad and my SD Palm. Uh, ready to go or those are communicating right now uh, again indicated by that blue line so if I highlight these um, and then hit apply those will be part of route so those are going to receive those are going to be the measuring devices that are going to receive this route when I'm done configuring it okay so the next thing down is inspection sequence. We have free and forced by inspection. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Free order and then forced order, right? So our list of inspections can be free or forced. Multiple test or single test is our execution mode. Multiple test allows us to do an inspection over and over and over again. A single test is one and done and you're on to the next. We don't wanna uh, have the ability to, to do multiple tests. So I'm gonna leave it at multiple tests. So the next one is the type. And this is very important. And I'm gonna to spend some time here explaining the, the two different types. And the two different types we have is manual and parametric. So the first one I'm gonna cover is manual. And if you notice, if you look over here in this grayed out here, all my inspections are manual only because that's how I choose to do my demo database. So in a manual database or ma manual route rather, we um, can add inspections in there. So if I hit this hourglass or search, um, these are the different inspections I have that, the, that I can build a route with. So I can very easily go up here and highlight the very top one and go down here to maybe here, and, you know, select multiples at a time and hit apply. And those are gonna end up in my route. 
So that's a manual route in the sense that I manually created it. It has no bearing on when things are due or, you know, this is something I'm just going to push down. I'm going to do these checks. If I like didn't like the order that this is in, I can highlight one and then use the up arrow down keys and then I can sequence them in an order that I wanted. And depending on if it was a free or force order, there's the order you'd be, you'd be running in. So a free order, I can jump around. So it really doesn't kind of matter. But ideally, you want to uh, organize an inspection in some kind of logical order as you're moving down maybe an assembly line. Okay. So let me take a step back and then talk about the parametric, right? So we have a, a manual route configured right now where we have a list of inspection. The real difference between manual and parametric, and you can see when I select parametric right now, it's gonna change my options underneath there uh, completely different. And what the parametric is, and maybe a better name instead of parametric would be dynamic. Again, wasn't my decision to call it parametric, but a parametric route looks at the scheduling we have for an inspection. So uh, uh, in the manual, we have a list of inspections um, and, they're, and they're in there and we're gonna execute them, you know, the full uh, route list, right? Well, our parametric can consist of multiple different types of tool checks or joint checks or and for that matter, um, you know, the, the manual can too. But the idea is what the difference is, is the parametric is gonna look at the scheduling. And, and if something is due for a check, it's going to add it to the route. And if it's not due, say it's not due for another month, it will not be included. So that's why I, call, I kind of call it a, a dynamic route, if you will. So and when we're building a route this way, we can say we only want to do tool checks or we can do multiple different disciplines, let's say, in quality inspection. So I can grab all three of these and I can grab that. Let me do a shift here and then go down. So... So I'm going to grab multiple types of tests, tool check, joint check, visual, and I'm going to do calibrations. I'm going to do SC, MCMK, and SBC tool. There should be an SBC joint too. Oh, there it is down there. All right, so I'm going to highlight that also. So we're going to have all these in included in our route. And then... Again, it's based on a schedule, so we can define when it's going to expire and, and, and how close we are to it expired, or maybe it expired in the past, what's going to be building in that route. So we can define that time frame or uh, the timeline around the expiration, right? So yesterday, today, last seven days. Um, there's a percentage here. When we look at our scheduling, you see when you look at the different joints, and inspections, you can see that there's actually a percent. It's almost like a fuel gauge. As we're running low, we can define, hey, like, you know, at three quarters of uh, if expiring, maybe we want to add it to the list or whatever. So I think you get the idea. Or we can say, hey, if it's failed in the last so many days, we can add that to the list automatically. And then the status of the uh, last inspection, whether it be a partial inspection completed or completely abandoned, we didn't finish it. We put that in there. So that's the real difference between the manual and the parametric. The parametric is a dynamic way to have a list of inspections within a route change based on when they're due and when they need to be checked. Okay, so underneath the inspections uh, to include under the parametric, we have traceability tags. Traceability tags could be an operator's name. It could be the vehicle uh, VIN code scans or something like that. Uh, it could be pick lists. Traceability tags can be added into the route here. So if I hit the little plus button right now, and this is where we can define traceability tags. And I can say operator. And then we decide the level where it's at. Is that the route? Is that the individual inspection or individual part? Or is it by sample? Again, depending on what we're doing, maybe it makes sense to do it by sample. So again, this is where we defined where we're doing it. So by route, I'm gonna say we wanna have an operator put in his name uh, in here. Um, I can have it optional or not. And then we decide the, the, the source of that traceability, whether it be a keyboard, pick list, potentially a scan, right? A barcode scan. Um, I'm going to say keyboard. Hey, let's do pick list. So pick list is, brings up another window where we can actually uh, start operator names and I have one in there. Hit apply. So the op something I've already filled out, operator names, it's already in there. And I think I have a couple, two or three names in there. Allow for manual in input. So that would be something where your, your normal operator is not, uh, he's on vacation and you have a backup guy and his name isn't in the pick list. Allow him to enter his name in there. And then the collection point. Uh, before or after, typically we're going to do this before we uh, collect any information. If I hit save, that's now going to be in there, part of that traceability tag for that inspection, or for that route, rather. 
So below that, we have traceability tag on resume. And this is for one of those scenarios where if we get halfway through a route, um, say we have several inspections, I and mean, we get halfway, we go to lunch, we come back, and if there's a certain amount of time, it's going to um, uh, require us to re-log in. In this case, for the operator name, he's going to have to re uh, put his name in there, or maybe he's going to have to re-scan if it's a barcode. And then in the route underneath there, we have custom fields where we can add in different and custom fields that we want, right? This is something we can um, put in here. Um, uh, again, this is where we can scan additional information into, uh, into the collection. So we have uh, up to five different uh, individual custom fields that we can add in here. So I'm gonna hit save, and this route is gonna show up under my route list as a parametric. You can see it at the top of the list, right? So that's the only parametric I have in here. And like I said, the big difference between a parametric and a manual is the parametric allows us to have a dynamic list of inspections within the route, right? Meaning if it's due, it's in there. If it's not due, it's not gonna be in the list, and maybe our route's gonna be a little bit shorter that way. Okay, so our route's up there, and then really the next thing we have to do is send this down to our measuring devices. So as you remember, I uh, selected two measuring devices. My pad and my palm are both going to receive this route when I hit send. So if we did everything correctly, um, we should get confirmation back that this route was sent both to the pad and the palm with a green box that comes up. And there we go. Route sent successfully to the SD pad and the both SD palm. So both those measuring devices received our parametric route. Again, remember a parametric route is our dynamic list of inspections within a route, and our manual is just that manual list of multiple inspections. I could see the parametric being used um, for tool checks, um, for like you know tool calibrations, annual calibrations. Customers can have a list of every single DC tool in the whole plant. And uh, basically, if it's due that month, it would be included in the parametric route. And if it's not, and the other 11 months are not going to be included in that route. So that's the whole intentions of having a parametric route. A manual route, again, just has a list of inspections. And this is something maybe that's uh, more inducive to like a daily route, right? Um, we don't have a long expiry period between our inspections. So a manual route would be our daily residual checks, right? If they're due, they're due. We're going to do them every day because they're critical to us, uh, and that could be easily be done in a manual route. So that was the routes within QA Supervisor software. If you have any further questions, contact your Atlas Copco rep, and thank you for watching. <laughs>